Okay, so here we have another example of factoring a trinomial. Okay, so first off, we do want to check to make sure that we do not have a greatest common factor amongst all three terms. So again, checking for our variables, we have an x here, an x here. Don't have one for that third term. Looking at our constants, because we have a 1 here in the front, we know that we could not have anything in common with the other two other than that 1, so this does not work. We do not have a greatest common factor. Well, that just means we can go straight to factoring our trinomial into these two binomials. Now, because we do have a leading coefficient of 1, that does make it a little easier for us, because taking a look at our first term here, an x squared. That first term in our trinomial comes from multiplying the first terms in our binomials. So we need to think what times what is going to give us an x squared. And the only thing that's going to give us an x squared when we multiply is an x times an x. That's the only possible way we can get an x squared when multiplying. And do remember that does come from the product rule. Remember x times x. The product rule says that when we multiply like bases, we scooch on over our x and we add those exponents. 1 plus 1 gives us 2. So therefore, x times x is x squared. Okay. So then we can move on to our last term. So after figure, looking at our first term, we move to our last term. And our last term is a 20. And what we need to think about is what are all the possible numbers that can multiply together to get 20? And let's list them. 1 times 20 would give us 20. 2 times 10. Well, let's see, 3 times nothing would give us 20, a 4 times a 5 would give us 20, and those are all the possible combinations that would work. So here we have three different possible combinations that would multiply to give us 20. Now, what we need, how we figure out which one of these three combinations that we're going to use is this. We want the combination of factors that will multiply to get our last term but we'll add or subtract to get our middle term. So we need to think, okay, will any of these add or subtract to get a 19? Well, okay, well, 20 minus a 1 would give us 19. Okay, 10 minus a 2 wouldn't work. 10 plus a 2 wouldn't work. 4 plus 5 or 5 minus 4 would not work. So let's go with the 1 and the 20. 20 minus 1 would give us a 19. The next thing we would have to look at is our signs. Okay, so our signs. Remember, the easiest thing to look for is our middle term. Whatever sign the middle term has, the bigger number must have it. So since 20 is bigger than 1, that means the minus must go over there. Which means we need to figure out, is there a plus or a minus for this first binomial? So when thinking about this, we need to remember that these two numbers must multiply to get our last term, but add or subtract to get a negative 19. So would a positive 1 times a negative 20 give us a positive 20? Or would a negative 1 times a negative 20 give us a positive 20? Well, a negative would work, right? A negative 1 times a negative 20 would be a positive 20. Now. The rule did say that these need to multiply to get the last term, but add or subtract to get our middle term. Now, negative 1 times negative 20 is a positive 20. Negative 1 plus negative 20 is a negative 21, not a negative 19. Hmm. Did we do something wrong? Well, Looking over here back at our factors, there's no possible other factors that would work. These two other combinations here don't even come close to giving us a negative 19. So those would not work. We can maybe play around with our different numbers here. Maybe if we put a plus here, but then a positive times a negative would be a negative, not a 20. So it seems like something is just not working out here. And honestly, this problem, it's kind of a trick question here. This problem is actually unfactorable, which is called prime. So if a problem is not able to be factored, we call it prime. So there actually is no solution for this particular one here.